Hello, welcome back to the Fish Locker Workshop. I'm going to show you three different ways that I rig soft plastic lures. That's fishing from the shore or fishing from the boat. The first rig that I use is called a Texas rig. Now, I'm rigging this with an eagle claw wormer hook, meaning that allows you to rig that allows you to rig a soft plastic weedless style. I'll get into that when I'm making the rig. But I've been using 25 pound fluoro, and that is a length of about just over a foot. Texas rigging has a little lead right on top of the hook. So it has a free sliding, it has its own hook length ending in a barrel swivel. And it has got a little sliding lead right on top of the hook. Now this is this is probably not even 10 grams. You can have it as heavy as you want or as light as you want, depending what you want to do. Fishing from a boat, maybe get a couple of ounce. Fishing from the shore, LRF style with a tiny hook, use a couple of grams. So that's Texas rigging. The other way, Carolina rigging. Now, Carolina rigging, you have a separate hook length. This is ending in a little chino hook. This is one that I've been using for RAS. Again, 25 pound fluoro, but that's slightly less, probably just less than a foot. And then you have a locked in lead. Just a little tiny locked in lead. This is just a little tungsten bullet of about an ounce. And that's locked in, so it doesn't matter how big you want to make it. You could make it four inches, you make it 10 inches. This is probably about, about eight inches long. And I connected the two with a little snap swivel. So Carolina rigging has a locked in lead. Texas rigging has the lead right on top of the hook. The other rig that I use is drop shot rig. That is very simply just that. It is just like a paternoster rig, but without a boom. You just tie your hook straight into your main rig body. Again, I've made this out of 25 pound fluoro, and I think that is a 1-0 chino. You make them smaller, you make them bigger. I use this predominantly for um, using coarse fishing for things like perch, and I use it in uh, sea fishing for wrasse. And all you do is you tie your hook straight into your rig body. I've got a little wiggly plastic on there, and you just fish it vertically and make it dance like that. So you put a lead on the bottom, connect that swivel to your main line, and you just fish it vertically just bouncing it around like that. Sea fishing wise, I have only ever caught wrasse on these. Caught perch on them coarse fishing, I've caught trout on them coarse fishing, but if you're going to be targeting saltwater fish with a drop shot, you're mainly going to be catching things like ballon wrasse. You might catch little things like pouching and whiting as well, but ballon wrasse are going to be what I use it for. Whereas the Texas rigging and the Carolina rigging, I have used um, all sorts of different things used lunkers, I've used uh, like Senko imitations. I'll show you here where I've actually got one rigged up in this packet. Use these for pollock, these are good for trolling pollock. If you're rigging up, uh, look, you see how it's rigged weedless. Weedless just basically means that the point of the hook is hidden by the lure. And whenever a fish bites onto it, the hook point comes proud and it hooks up. Now this little tiny Sandale imitation is great for fishing either Texas or Carolina and fishing cast and retrieve. And all that means there from the boat or the shore is you just cast it out as far as you can and you either bring it in along the top so it swims around or you can let it drop right to the bottom and you just bump it back along the bottom. Uh, the hooks, these are, these are ones I've had for years. They're, they're really strong, really sharp. They are Eagle Claw, laser sharp, Jason Christie style whoever he is, but it even shows you on the back how to rig them up. These have a little flat bit there in the hook so that you can rig it straight up and have the bend out. You can use other hooks and rig things weedless. I've found that these stingers work well. Now, whatever size you're fishing for, you match the size of the hook to the size of fish. If you're fishing for things like pollock and bass, you can use a big hook. If you're using small, little, tiny wigglies like this for LRF, you're not going to get away with a 4-0 hook. You're going to have to use like a size 6 or something, something small. You just, you change your hooks to suit the lure and to suit the fish that you're fishing for. First one, Texas rig. Absolutely simple. All it is, basically, it's just a hook length. So I've been using small barrel swivels. And they're like this small. I like using uni nuts. 
uni knots I've found give a nice streamlined hook length. They're strong and they don't they don't damage the line as some knots can do around the bend. So uni knot, I've actually got a video on the Fish Locker Workshop channel showing you how to tie a uni knot. So if you're unsure, I'll put that on there. I'll just run through real quick. I use a four turn uni knot. I like these, like I said, because they tighten around the line and slide to the bend rather than tightening around the bend. Because don't forget to lubricate your knots. Because when they tighten down, it causes friction. Friction causes heat and the heat damages the line. These leads, you can use anything from a real light one to a real heavy one, depending what you want. These little tungsten weights here, these egg sinkers are uh, three eighths of an ounce. So all you're going to do is slide it onto your line. And then I'm going to tie one of these eagle claw hooks on and I'll show you how to rig it up. And then I'll tie one of these other hooks on and I'll show you how to rig that up. These are four rows. I've caught big fish and small fish on these four rows. I thought they were a decent size. Uh, six rows were a little bit too big and two rows were a little bit too small. Again, another uni knot, four turns. It's one of the things I've said to folks before. You can catch you can catch big fish on a small hook, but you can't catch small fish on a big hook. So unless I'm doing things like wreck fishing, where predominantly the, the species that I'm going to be going for are big and I've got big mouths. I will always go a little bit small on the hook. Just because I would rather catch something and it be small than nothing. There you go, look. That's it. Literally, there it is. There's your Texas rig made up, ready to go. And all you need to do is you need to pick your lure. There you look. It's just a stretchy, soft plastic. With this straight bit in the hook, it's for rigging a bait straight across the hook like that so you start off with the head section and you just go in and then come straight out again just below like that that is then for sliding up the hook slide up onto the flat bit like that you can then measure out exactly where inside the lure this is going to come out and you just go straight through it there look now to hide the hook point all you need to do is slide it up push the lower a little tiny bit forward and let it sit back that is it that is this ragworm rigged weedless that will go through the weeds now and nothing is going to snag up on it but when a fish bites it it pings that away and it finds the hook point. So that is that is literally it. That is Texas rig rigged weedless. And that will be perfect for ras or pollock. You might fluke a bass with it, but I've, found, I've generally found that these type of lures, they catch ras and pollock. The reason that I've found that these stingers work, even though they are quite a heavy gauge, is because of the shape of the bend. Now, some people might have an opinion about this, about them um, being bright silver. Saying, oh yeah, fish will see it. No, I've found the opposite. I've found that fish generally like something shiny. Whether it be out of curiosity, whether it be because they think it's a little fish or a whale, I, I don't know. But yeah, people say, oh, you only have a fish with black hooks. I'd take a silver hook over a black hook anytime. But that's my own personal preference. So straight as before, all you're going to do is you're just going to tie a uni knot in it. There are only maybe three or four different knots that I use because they cover loads of different things. There are videos in the Fish Locker Workshop on a playlist, which is a knot tying playlist. So if you want to give that a watch, they're all they're only short videos and they explain how to tie it and the reasons why I use them. Right, there we go. You can see straight away what I mean by the shape of the hook, how it would lend itself to fishing like that, can't you? Whereas a normal J hook, or roughly the same size, has a different shape. So all I would do, I will rig, I'll rig another little ragworm up just to show you. So 
exactly as before in and out and then you just slide it all the way up and then line it up with where you want to come out and pop the hook out there you go see so if you haven't got these hooks these are ideal these are made for it if you haven't got them you can use other hooks to kind of make it work it's not perfect but then again it still works there you go so that's texas rigging you can use anything like a lunker city senko little imitation ragworms little tiny wigglies these I don't know, these are like a no brand i've caught fish on them all carolina rig right that's the one with the locked in lead the beauty of this being all you all you really need to do is when you're at home is make up a dozen half a dozen whatever you want to do different weights like this is three eighths this one's a half that one could be a different weight make up a load of different weights from like your smallest to your biggest that you might have any age you make them all up the same with a barrel swivel on both ends and then a little snap and then all you've got is you've got interchangeable weights and you could have the same hook length and if the tide picks up just change the weight so I mean so you don't have to change the whole rig whereas a Texas rig you would have to make up a lot of different rigs because the, the weight is in on the hook swivel hook length swivel snap swivel again dead simple only use small swivels these for anyone wanting to know are a size six again everything that i'm using is 25 pound fluoro if you're fishing lrf 25 pound fluoro is going to seem very heavy to you if all you've ever done before is wreck fishing and you're used to using like 60 to 100 pound line 25 pound line might seem a little bit light but if you get a good quality one you have a low diameter and it's strong and i do like fluoro as well it has uh, harder properties than mono so i found that it has better abrasion resistance it also is practically invisible underwater right these locked in leads like i say i've got boxes at home i just buy assorted ones online of all the different weights that i might need because you can buy them everything you can buy a pack that's got 50 in and it's got four of every weight and all you do is you just knock up a lot of these at home keep them in a little tub like i keep things in all the water tubs and then all you do is when you get down on the rocks your first cast if the tide's a little bit slack change it to a lighter one if your tide's a bit strong change it to a heavier one there you are there's your little locked in lead on the back of that all i use is a little snap buy them in packs of 100 cost pennies and from there all you need to do is you make up your hook length and your hook length can be like i say have one of these hooks on have a normal hook on have a little tuna one i will show you the one with the little tuna one i'm not even going to bother making one up just because it's that simple all it really is is it is a hook length just a piece of mono with a hook on one end and a swivel on the other but i'll show you this little chino these are what i use for fishing for wrasse sometimes when i'm fishing for small wrasse you can't get away with a big hook and i'm using a small lure like one of these little pinkies even now you can either rig it up straight on straight on like that or you could try and sneak it on there weedless style like that drop shotting like i say all it is it's just a length i'll tie a barrel swivel to one end and make a loop for a lead on the bottom the reason i make a loop is because you can interchange your leads you make your make your rig body as long as you want again uni knots and all you generally use to tie the hook on 
is a Palomar knot. There is a video, there is a video on the channel already showing you how to make um, a Palomar knot. Right, I will make this that long. Yeah, doesn't really matter. On the bottom for your lead, all I'll do is tie a double overhand knot to a loop. So through once, through twice, wet it, make a loop, take off the tag end. The reason that I do that is because this is a one and a half ounce lead. All you do is you just take the loop, go through the eye of the lead, then pass the lead through the loop and you're connected. And then to change it, all you do, push it through and put a different weight on. So you've got interchangeable leads. Now for connecting the hook, wherever on this you want to put it, I'll put this bang on in the middle, bend the line over. This will be, <laughs> this will be the tricky part, run cold fingers. Bend the line over, double it up, and just push it straight through the eye of the hook. Right, so you've gone through the eye of the hook. You then do an overhand knot, like that, look. Take the loop through. So you've basically just done the first part of a granny knot. You then pull the hook through, like that, wet it all, and then making sure it's all above the eye of the hook, tighten it down without sticking the hook point in your finger, which I'm struggling to do. There you go, pull down tight. And there it is. And then onto that, all I'll do is I'll connect for perch connect something like one of these and you literally just go through the tip of the nose like that you've got your lead on the bottom up on the top and you just and if I'm going for rass I'll use a little tiny wiggly like this rass love bright colours most of it with RAS is an aggression thing. It isn't a feeding thing. If they think it's something that's in their territory that shouldn't be there, they'll go in and have a go at it. So these are great for that. So drop shot in. Carolina rigging. And then finally, Texas rigging. I hope this has been interesting. All the very best. See you later.